Hi, fourth graders. I am making a video for you now that we're transitioning into our in-person learning. We have been working a lot on our bow song, and I know we've been using the pencil mostly, um, but I'm going to have my real bow here, so you can be practicing with your pencil and watching me with the real bow. We're going to just do a quick warm-up with our bow song. Ready, go. Thumb bend, middle extend, fingers drop, pinky on top, and we're going to do a couple pinky push-ups. Maybe pick a number between 5 and 10 and do that many. Maybe your thumb bumps, or your elbow makes the bow go, or your salt shaker exercise. Um, so make sure you're warming up with that every day. And then I have my violin here, but you can also do the same thing with viola, um, is make sure that you know how to put your shoulder rest or sponge on. Think about the skinny side, the slope side, matching the same side as your chin rest. So sometimes the silver part will be on that same side. Uh, that helps you remember S for silver, S for skinny, S for slope. It all matches where the chin rest is right there. Okay, uh, so make sure you know how to put that on. And then make sure you know the parts of your instrument that we've reviewed, the neck, the pegs, the F holes, okay, the body right here. We're gonna take our left hand, if you play violin or viola, and hold the top left hand corner so we can work on our rest position. We did this in class. Uh, if you're cello, you're, or uh, bass, you're going to be standing or sitting with your instrument, okay, and practice holding the top, and then we also talked a little bit about the names of the strings, so be reviewing that you know which string is called what, so from lowest to highest, we're going to go over the names of the strings for violin, viola, cello, and then bass, we're going to go in opposite direction, highest to lowest. Okay, so you can find your lowest string because it's going to be the thickest, fattest string. And for violins, we're going to say good dogs always eat, G, D, A, E. Okay, so practice knowing which string is which. Practice holding it in rest position and making sure you know how to get your sponge on this week. And then, of course, practice your bow exercises on a pencil. Um, if you've gotten really good and you've gotten your passcode from me, you can try it on your real bow. Of course, make sure you're not touching your bow hair. And make sure you're still keeping that thumb bent. And you're still keeping all your fingers nice and relaxed, okay? Uh, then the other thing is if you're viola... We're going to make sure that we know the same, the notes of our strings from lowest to highest are not the same as violin. Uh, so for viola, it would be cats go dancing around C, G, D, A, from the lowest, thickest, fattest one to the highest one. Okay. In the book I made you, we're going to sometimes go out of order, so we might even skip a string. We might start on the highest to lowest. We might start lowest to highest. So practice different ways of quizzing yourself on those string names. Okay, and then the cellos are exactly the same as violas. So if you remember what I just told for violas, cellos are cats go dancing around. Same exact thing as viola. I'm putting all the instruments on this video since we're combining uh, for our modified in-person learning. Um, we will have all the instruments in the class. So listen and learn about some other different instruments other than your own instrument. Um, and if you play bass, it's the same as violin, but backwards. So your lowest, thickest string is E and your highest, thinnest string is G. So in the basis case, we're going to start from highest and go lowest, opposite order. Good dogs always eat. 
If you come up with another mnemonic device to help you memorize these, let me know. That's always fun to hear the different creative ones. Uh, so practice the names of your strings, practice them out of order, practice holding your instrument in rest position safely. If you're a cello or bass, practice getting your end pin the right height. So you have to unscrew it, lefty loosey, pull it out, righty tighty. Um, if you're a cello, you can measure that by putting your left arm straight as you sit at the front of your chair, feet flat on the floor, then your hand should be just right at the top of the body of the cello, okay? As long as your arm is straight and the cello is straight tall in front of you and you're sitting at the front of your chair, you'll know you've done the right end pin adjusting if you do that. It's usually a little bit longer than your hand, so you can measure the end pin under your hand and maybe add an inch or two depending on how tall you are, okay? For basses, most of our bass players will not need to adjust the end pin. Uh, violins, violas, check that you've done your shoulder rest correctly. Those are all your jobs, along with practicing your bow song, your bow hold, sending me your videos, working on week four's modules. So uh, let me know if you need extra help. Wednesday's the day to get extra help from me, all right? Have a great week. Bye.